All right, guys. So I'm answering a email that was sent to me by somebody who watches uh, my YouTube videos. So I figured I was just going to do it in this format using my webcam because it's just easy. So um, currently I am working at Amazon Warehouse, but the job is killing me. Yeah, you can see, I can see me as it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and for the past three years, I'm working at night. Um, you know what? Forget. I'm not going to read the whole thing because uh, I'll just tell you what's going on. So you have somebody here who, uh, after getting through some uh, pretty tough t challenges in their life, decided that they are going to uh, take six months to a year to become a web developer and live off their savings and maybe do some part-time work. That's cool. Now, here's the thing. I would suggest that instead of going full-time to learn how to code, and I think he's already, he's already learning how to code now, so instead of dropping your work, cutting off your income, then learning how to code, and then putting yourself under a lot of pressure, learn how to code on the side as you still work, and you got money coming in, you're paying your bills, relaxing. By the way, you should always try to save every month, even if it's a small amount. Try to save maybe 10% of your salary every month as a beginning place. Anyway, um, so learn to code on the side. Get through the basics real quick. Concentrate on those fundamentals, as I said. If you're looking for freelance work, uh, you want to go with the, the web stack, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript and then maybe jump to PHP. I would think that would be your best choice, or maybe Ruby or something, but PHP is probably the best choice because then you can do like WordPress and so forth. Again, as I've said in so many videos, check out where the demand is in your area. The demand will be different in different, will be different, in different areas depending on that local demand. You make your choice in terms of uh, the type of work. And what he's also pointing out is that he's actually doing projects side projects for friends of his, with friends of his, and that's very cool. That is the key. The key is, after you got your fundamentals down, is to jump into some real projects. So let me tell you a quick story about how I got my first server-side database-driven coding gig. Now, I had done a lot of web design gigs, but I never did server-side programming before. I knew a bit of JavaScript at the time. So this is in 96, maybe. I think it's 96, maybe 97. And I got approached to do a job, a database-driven website, which is the old term for what we call web apps now. And so I went in there, and based on my knowledge of client-side coding, meaning HTML and a touch of JavaScript, CSS wasn't really there at the time, I did a rough guesstimate about how much time it would take me to build this project. So I gave him a quote on 30 days and come hell or high water I was going to make sure that this gets done but at the time I didn't know anything about databases I didn't know anything about server-side coding so what I did is right after I solidified the deal got the check my 33 up front 33 percent which I talk about in other videos I went straight to the bookstore see at the time I don't even Google I don't even think Google was around at the time and if it was, it was too primitive. So the search engines and going online for video courses just didn't exist. So what I did is I go to, straight to the bookstore, and I remember picking up Rocks, W-R-O-X. They were a big publisher back in the dot-com era. I believe they're, they were bought up or they're no more at this point. But anyway, so I bought a book, a couple books, on what was the hot new web development technology of the time, ASP, Microsoft Active server pages and ASP uh, was um, something that worked only on Microsoft uh, web servers and but but rather it was far superior than the current standard which was CGI based programming with Perl or sometimes C and it was just so much faster and it was the first that I know of page based server side paradigm if you will now, the language that we used to create ASP pages was either VBScript or JavaScript, although 99% of people just use VBScript. So what I did is I, I, I went straight from the client to the bookstore, bought the two books, 
And at this point, like I said, I knew nothing about databases. I knew nothing about server-side coding. I had done just a touch of JavaScript, and I knew my HTML. And you know, at those in those days, it was HTML and Photoshop. You didn't have CSS, and you laid everything out in HTML tables to get the design you wanted. Anyway, I, dig I digress. So I sat there. I had 30 days to do this, and it was a pretty involved app. The previous company that I was who was who had built the app for his company had built it with Perl, Perl CGI, and after a year, they, it still didn't work properly. But I gambled that I could get it done in a month with this brand new technology from Microsoft, Active Server Pages. It was that much more efficient than uh, Perl CGI. Anyhow, so I got home with these books, sat down one page at a time, boom, boom, went through, wrote, wrote out the code, set up databases. I was using... Um, to demo everything, I was, I was using Access, I think it was the back-end database, just to sort of practice learning how to code in uh, in VBScript ASP, classic ASP as they call it today. And I pulled it off. Not only did I pull it off within 30 days, the app worked very well right away. And it was not so much because I was a, good, a great coder or anything. It was my very first paid server-side programming gig. It worked because I was able to leverage new technology that other people hadn't touched at that time. And it was significantly better. Like classic ASP and Active Server Pages, as it was just called back then, was significantly better than Perl CGI in terms of uh, performance, in terms of speed, of, of uh, runtime speed. It's just much better. So that's why I was able to do it. I was able to do it in a fraction of time, even though I was a noob. That being said, because of my martial art background because of my tendency towards simplicity and my tendency towards modularity from working in my previous business where I was building central water purification systems for fish. It's another story. I uh, was fortunate or lucky enough that I had that perception of advanced uh, development because of that. Um, the principles rather from my business and martial arts work allowed me to actually execute my code uh, a at a little bit more of an advanced level than a typical beginner coder because I had high, I was highly experienced in other systems, other types of systems, if that makes sense. So anyway, the whole, what's the whole point of this story? Listen, man, uh, you know, you don't, you don't need six to 12 months to get into the market. I think that once you do uh, two or three projects, which you could get done in a couple of months, you might be able to find yourself a good entry-level paying job, so uh, just keep at it.